Hello, welcome back to the YouTube channel of Bethel Evangelical Free Church Hanley. I'm Pastor Gervais Charmley. This is another church in Lancashire. This is the church of St. Michael, St. Michael's on Wire. And the fact that the village is named for the church suggests what is true, this is a very old church. St. Michael's probably has its origins in the Norman era, so in the 11th, 12th centuries. Although nothing of that date survives today, what we see here today is largely 14th century and later. And it's an example of a medieval Lancashire church. Now, medieval Lancashire churches very often are like this. They are long and they are low. You can see here there is no clear story. Now, most 14th century churches wouldn't have had them originally, but a lot of them in the 15th century, they add a clear story. And, of course, the point about the clear story is to let more light in. What that means is that this building, and it's, now it's after half past three on a um, January day, and a mid-January day at that, so it's getting a bit gloomy out there, but it gets very gloomy in here. So I've got the lights on and made a donation to cover the cost. So here we are, St. Michael's on Wire, and it's a big building, and it, it's big, however, not vertically but horizontally so it spreads out that way and this way and the other way um, and we'll see that as we go around so let's do that actually have a look around this historic building as usual of course we start at the west end and here again it means being in the tower there's a list of um, Vickers going all the way back to 1203, so uh, that's of some interest. And Nathaniel Baxter, 1659, replaced 1663 by John Greenwood. I mean, whether that means uh, an injection or not, I don't know, but there was a lot of Puritans in Lancashire. Here's the font. You can see that's Victorian with some knitted figures around the bottom. And, and Edward Greenall of Myerscough Hall there. Um, it's good actually to to end here because it'll be the last one I'll be visiting today um, because the first one's Billsborough which was built by an owner of Myerscough Hall in that case Mrs Salisbury. So important house here and yes your eyes do not deceive you the wall here is leaning slightly outwards it's supported by the um, uh, yeah, aisle and it's all quite so you can see the aisle here is a pretty big aisle and um, the north aisle is much smaller vestry at the back there and the aisle here is uh, laid out as it they often are in this case it, this is a very short aisle it's laid out as a um, side chapel you can see here you've got we've got because again this is january we're still um, epiphany but here are some bits of old stained glass a couple of uh, uh, heraldic pieces and then there is this here um, clearly that's an agnes i expect um, mm -hmm. and we've got the shepherds there um, here we have the abbeystead disaster now i'm not sure what the abbeystead disaster was i should have looked it up but uh, 23rd of May 1984 um, and this says the or this oratory known by ancient records to have been before the dissolution and chantry dedicated to St Catherine and completely and completely endowed with land the neighbouring townships was repaired by John Strain I think it's oh, Strain no John France Esquire of Rawcliffe Hall in 1797 being an appendage to that, to that ancient manor house and there we have the east window here, that's St. Michael and angels and saints. Looking west here, um, yes, that's just artificial Christmas tree stuff on the columns. Um, they haven't taken their Christmas decorations down yet, that makes me feel better. Um, <laughs> the pulpit is really quite modern. It was, um, Erected by British and friends in memory of, jo of Phipps John Hornby, M.A., 34 years vicar of this parish, 27 years Archdeacon of Lancaster, and he died in 1936, so yeah, 1930s stone pulpit. 
and you can see it's just blocks of stone built up. Now, in the middle, we have the plow. Now, why is there a plow in the church? Well, it's to do with Plow Sunday, which is, uh, well, a historic, shall we say, actually pre-Reformation thing. It's to do with uh, when they began the plowing after Christmas. But it's been resurrected as an idea in many rural parishes, and you'll find these plows. They're usually kept outside most of the year, and they're brought in for Plow Sunday. So that's the plow. Um, we have a chancel here. It's a, this is a big, big building, really. A uh, chancel we got here. Uh, William Hornby, um, Archdeacon of Lancaster. Ah, so you've got uh, um, Fitz John Hornby and William Hornby. And of course, what you're looking at here is father and son. This is the father. You'd get these clerical dynasties who would hold the church. You see there the remains of a, an arch that would have led to a, a, a um, chapel on the north side, which has since been demolished. The chapel on the south side is still there, and it's just part of the aisle. You can see the organ is in there. Again, they haven't removed the Christmas stuff yet, so here we have their um, nativity scene um, in memory of... Um, Bill Mason, who died in 2001. Um, Joseph Starkey Hornby, Victor, uh, sorry, William Hornby, and more. And we've got Hugh Hornby, um, 56 years vicar of this parish. And then above, we have medieval wall painting. Just about make out some figures there. I'm not quite sure what they are, but that's definite medieval wall painting. Here we have uh, East Window, Christ the Good Shepherd with St. Peter and St. John, and then we've got angels above. And there is the piscina, which obviously has been covered up at one point and since exposed. And looking west, you can see big, uh, long church. Looking west there, you've got the um, tower and the big tower window. That's I think the tower's 15th century by the look of it. And you can just see up here, there's some dormer windows, and that's... We haven't got a pr proper clear street, but we put some dormer windows in to make up for it. And then here we go into the south aisle, the um, other aisle, if you will. Um, the memory of Elizabeth um, Cromelholm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it, daughter of the Reverend William Cromelholm, who was uh, formerly vicar of this parish for upwards of 36 years. Um, and she died in 1817. So here we are, and this is a big, broad south aisle, um, very, very different from the sort of um, from the north aisle. The north aisle is much smaller, um, although there's plenty of evidence that it wasn't originally small. It may originally have not been quite so small, but it's certainly narrower and always has been. Um, but this is a, and you see here the the seats here all facing inwards towards the pulpit because this is yeah, Lancashire Church yes a, a lot of this is Protestant and oh here we are it's quite interesting this is benefactions and we've got because this was a big parish um, it had chapels and you can see here you've got the interest of 20 pounds to be distributed in bread to the poor people taking divine service at Cop Chapel uh, invest in the Reverend William Hornby St Michael's on wire you can see all these and the, the different um, townships, and there we have these little, um, these uh, square-headed three-light windows. And at the back here we have, they come all the way back to the um, the sower there in this window, 20th century by the look of it. Um, yeah, the sower going forth to sow, and you can see you've got the thorns, you've got the birds, um, you've got the rocks, and all the imagery of that parable in this window. And that's what makes a good stained glass window, certainly a parab parabolic one. And here we are looking from the back and looking into the other aisle, and you can just see how big this building is. It served an enormous parish. And the parish has been reduced in size, although, of course, now a lot of the churches have been amalgamated to make one big um, 
big living and all the parish was brought together with the one clergyman again. Um, although they now have, I suspect, a few more chapels than they did. And this nice rustic arcade here. So beautiful example of this long, low language. If we go outside now, I think we hopefully still got enough light to just have a bit of a look around. <laughs> And now we are outside at St Michael's, you can see it's getting quite gloomy, I mean it's uh, about four o'clock in the middle of uh, February and even on a very nice bright day like this, it gets dark earlier. You can see here behind me this nice tower, now the tower looks broader here than it is all the way because there's a stair turret that sticks out and that's also why the tower might look as though it's a little bit two dimensional, it's not, it's just that, that this stair tower is sticking out, we'll see it as we go all the way around. So here we are, This obviously I'm at the south-east corner. You can see the church here behind me, the two gable ends, the big south aisle and the nave. So we'll have a look around and again point out the salient features. We notice the leaning arcade inside, you can see there the aisle is outer wall, the south wall is leaning as well, and there's the um, old um, sundial. It's interesting because Middle Ages you have a cross um, for the for the burials, and then 18th century you get sundials. And there yeah, you see that tower with its stair turret, and you can just see the setting sun, raise the setting sun against the stair turret there. Um, Round the back, the back, you can see that the, the stone of the chancel is much better quality than the stone of the aisle. I'm not sure why, um, but I suspect the aisle would have been rendered at one point because that's tenth century did. And then there is the tower. You can see the bell, bell opening there looks to be um, off centre, not because it is, but because you've got that stair turret and then the pinnacles on the edge. Um, and vestry out there on the north side. There probably would have been, well, in fact, you can see from the inside that there was some kind of chapel there, but the vestry, of course, is much more recent. Um, and tower, that is not the time, but clocks can go wrong and it can be a pain to, to wind them and things. And, here we are, the outside of the aisle, and we've got three um, chalices there. And again, this quite rough stonework, which is quite typical, because it would have been rendered. And if you render your stonework, then you don't need to have... Oh, here we go. Quite, these are quite fun. You've got these, you see these drip mouldings end in these figures a lion there and that I think is a lion's head it's something difficult to tell because most medieval artists had never seen a lion in their lives um, North Norway quite primitive but very nice and the main road goes past the past the tower there there we go thundering past and see there the setting sun um, that would have been a beer house I expect car park is over there, you can just about see the beer house. Um, so we'll turn around and here is the west door, which is ceremonial entrance. You see how broad it is, but it's not very tall. Um, I wonder if it was once taller, but something is done. This, it happened. We are very near the river here. I might have had to fill up the floor a bit, but I expect we didn't have to. It is just this low-lying building. There's a lot of these Lancashire medieval churches are like this, you see here. Nice perpendicular tower there. And there's the west, sorry, there's the, the west end of the south aisle. Um, and it is not two o'clock, it's a lot later than that, but like I say. Um, <laughs> and here we have the Millennium Memorial and its books. Quite right too. Anything, a statue to celebrate books, that's what we want celebration of books and that then is St Michael's and there is that stair turret 
sticking out there. So nice bit of uh, nice bit of perpendicular, 15th, maybe even 16th century. And so there you have it, St Michael's on Wire, as the golden evening sinks in the west, as the sun goes to light our brethren beneath the western sky, as they say. Here we are at St Michael's on Wire, this beautiful long low church. Glad I was able to get to this one because this is your typical big Lancashire big parish church. It's your typical medieval parish church, long and low and um, lots of pillars and that sort of thing. So thank you for watching and may God bless you and keep you until next time.